Hey, what's going on guys? Mark in the coral room of Mark's Aquatics. I thought I'd show you guys how to breed clownfish. Now I've got a pair of my Ocellaris clownfish here. Some say they're a bit perclery, but um, with that darker stripe on them. But they're a beautiful pair. And um, I put a slate in there for them. I'm just sat down nice and quiet and watching them from down below. I'm sorry if it's a little bit blue for you. But he's starting to show, uh, show a few signs. He's twitching away to her there. And I've been feeding him up for the last sort of couple of weeks now. She's been bullying him around a bit. This is what they do. And they go up and they'll clean the slate. And they'll make a nice little clean patch. It's quite clean anyway at the moment. There's no algae or anything on it. And then they're going to start to do their little courtship. And lay a load of eggs behind there. Which we can follow the process along. And find out what happens when these guys breed. They can have up to about 250 to 300 little fry so we can have quite a lot there in the tank and we'll try and keep them all together for as long as we can obviously we've got to have to watch that weir at the top there put a bit of sponge over the top to uh, to stop the little guys getting sucked down there when they start to hatch out but it's going to be good fun it'll be a nice little uh, nice little journey for you guys to follow along on there you go there's a little bit better picture for you now I've stood up a bit yeah <laughs> I do love these guys, these are quite an old pair, I've had quite a few fry from these over the time I've had them and um, they're very very easy fish to breed once you get them going but it's bringing up the fries, like I always say with all my breeding videos, whether it's neon tetras or anything else fish, it's easy to get them to lay the eggs and everything else, it's the bringing up the fry, that's the hard part with most of the fish species that we try to breed because they're so small, they need rotifers and little tiny Infusoria as I keep going on about on the freshwater side of things But hopefully with the next couple of days they're going to be laying lots of eggs behind that slate there And they'll be protecting them and then we can have a look back And see how they're getting on Right okay guys now you can see the male and female are starting to clean the slate And that normally means they're getting everything ready to lay some eggs which is a really good sign so I'm going to get back to you guys when, hopefully, well hopefully I can catch them laying the eggs for you, but if not we'll get back when there's some on the slate. Right guys, it's the following day and as I said yesterday we're going to watch as they were cleaning the slate. Now they've deposited quite a few eggs on there, now the thing is they're orange eggs and they decided to lay them on the other side. Now normally when I've bred clownfish they go on the underside in the little hole there and they'll lay them up on the inside there. Hello, try and have a go at me now because I'm getting near your eggs. But no, these guys have decided they were going to lay on the outside, which is completely fine. They're looking after them well. The male will do the majority of the cleaning. You'll see he'll just go up and mouth the eggs and he'll just be keeping them eggs clean and making sure no algae or any fungus or anything like that or removing any eggs. Now, if you look on the slate, you may see a couple of little white dots there. Now, they're either little crustaceans or they could be infertile eggs but I'll get you a close-up of the eggs you know she's having a little clean away as well it looks like there's quite a few eggs on there now there they can lay anywhere between three to four hundred eggs anywhere in the bigger species of clownfish up to a thousand eggs which is a lot of fry but there's quite a high mortality rate on clownfish fry when they when you bring them on you need super small foods now we're gonna have to start breeding rotifers or getting some rotifers and I've already got those in a bucket which is in the, the workshop. You've got to do this before you breed them. Get yourself a five gallon bucket or an old salt tub. Go online, buy yourself some phytoplankton and buy yourself a little starter culture of rotifers. And you just literally put them in some salt water from the tank, tip them in, stir in some, uh, some of the phytoplankton and let those guys prolifically breed away. And then when your little clownfish hatch out, We'll have, to, um, we'll have to start feeding them those. Now, clownfish are super easy to breed. They really are. Once you get them going, the hard part is obviously getting a pair, an, an established pair, which is, um, or, you know, which is going to breed for you readily. Because over the years of me, when I, was, when I first started breeding these, I had a whole room of these, all different species, um, maroons, you name it. I had a lot, and I was breeding them all. But it took a long time to get the pairs Sometimes you can get a young pair together, then it takes a long time. Females can get only get about reproductive, and they'll breed around maybe three, four years. 
some sooner. Males anywhere from six months, they'll breed, but the females take a long time. As you can see, she's taken a disliking to that snail moving around on the eggs there, so I'll probably, um, I'll probably remove that later on. But yeah, that's the hard part, guys, and that's getting a, an established pair. Um, and once you've got the established pair, then you're pretty well set to go. Um, I've had them where I've bought them up and the female has just not taken to the male at all and she's pursued him and I've had them actually kill the males um, sometimes when they just have not gelled together and it's a real shame so you've got to keep your eyes open when you put it but once you get these guys going and they're, they're a completely bonded pair they're going to spawn for you every 10 to 14 days okay and fed well like I said they're going to produce a lot of a lot of fry so the best thing to do is get yourself another tank settled down now with these guys as soon as those eggs hatch they will just eat the young they are, they are absolutely amazing parents for looking after the eggs but as soon as those fry hatch they're fair game and they'll eat them okay normally they'll be drifting away in the currents in the wild and they'll be dispersing around the reef hiding and um, and going on from there and feeding on the micro life and uh, phytoplankton and things like that so we've got to either move the parents out or move the slate out now I've got a bank of tanks here which these guys are in and I'm going to just literally take the slate out and I'm going to take it out underwater in a, in a, in a jar and then I'm going to put it into another tank. So exactly the same condition, same water parameters, everything else is, is the same. And then we can put a nice, very fine sponge filter, turn the flow down on the system. I'll get into all that as time goes on. And then we can uh, we can start bringing up these little guys, which is going to be really interesting for you guys to see because they're super cute clownfish. They really are when they're babies. But we've got to get them through that initial stage. Now when they're born, they're literally just eyes and a little stick they're nothing else they're minute as you've seen on the neon tetra fry and stuff like that they're of similar size and uh, literally they're just eyes they're just little pairs of eyes swimming around all over the place and absolutely beautiful to see and watch up in, in close up um but we've got to be feeding them that microplankton the phytoplankton because that's good for their stomachs that gets them going um and then afterwards you can feed baby brine shrimps as well which is what we're going to be doing as well i've got rotifers and that so get a mix up it's good practice for you to, to learn how to culture rotifers, very simple, loads of videos online which will show you how to culture rotifers. You literally just put them in a bucket with a heater and um, and they're away. And um, like I said, just copy a video and you'll be and you'll be up to speed and get lots of them in there. Get yourself one of those little fine fine sieve. Like I say guys in all my videos, any problems, any questions, get back to me and I'll reply to you ASAP. You know that. I can go over these things. I've got so many little things going on at the moment with the coral room as well, and um, which is doing absolutely fabulous at the moment. It really is selling lots and lots of coral, lots and lots of happy customers, which is brilliant, and uh, and getting more all the time, which is fabulous stuff. But I just thought I'd run through you a little breeding because it is absolutely amazing breeding clownfish. It really is. They're one of the most famous fish in the world, especially after the old Finding Nemo. And if you look at her. Hello darling, she's got little gimpy fins underneath, you see it up, up underneath these little pelvic fins there, she hasn't got any. If I can make her swim up, you can see she hasn't got any there at all. One little stumpy one, so it's the opposite way around. <laughs> but uh, they're a beautiful pair, they really are. Look at that, Look, she's cleaning away, making sure everything's clean, spitting any rubbish out. Oh, he, he spat that out, that was actually a bit of food from earlier on. And they're going to eat a lot at this time as well because like i say every two weeks they're going to be producing more eggs so it's nice to keep them fit and healthy while they're looking after the eggs now the eggs are going to take anywhere from i would say seven to ten days to hatch and um, you're going to see those eggs transform through different colors let's say they're orange at the moment but then they're going to start to go a silvery color and then after a time they're going to you're just going to see a lot of lots of little pairs of eyes looking at you um, when you get a close-up look which will try and get you shortly um, before they hatch out. Now I normally on the probably on the seventh day I'll actually remove that slate or them. I've got another tank downstairs actually I might just put them in the tanks downstairs because they're identical tanks in setup um, it's not going to worry them too too much and all I'm going to do is put another slate in down below. I'll catch them out very quickly drop them down put them into the other tank and they'll be quite happy in there until these little eggs hatch and we can bring them up in this tank then 
which is going to be interesting stuff. So I'm going to get back to you a day before they hatch. We'll take a little bit more footage then, I think. And um, we may see them hatch. They're going to hatch overnight. But like you say, they got some. there's a happy mum and dad there looking after those eggs. But first of all, I'll get you a little close-up of those eggs if, they, if they'll let me get close enough. There you go, guys. You can see the eggs there. I'll try and zoom in a little bit closer, but it's not going to be that clear, I'm afraid. There you go. You can see that little... Little clusters of eggs in amongst the diamonds there. Hello, mate. But we've got a lot of little eggs there, and obviously they're going to change colour later on. Keep your lights a little bit dim. You don't need bright lights in here. They're not light sensitive, so you haven't got to worry about that too much. But just keep your eyes on them. Keep your eye on the date, and don't forget, between 8 and 10 days, they're going to hatch. So between seven, day 7, you're going to want to be removing that slate. And now when you do, it's another thing. If they actually... If they lay the eggs underneath the slate here, once you've removed them, it's vitally important that you keep an oxygen supply on them, you see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip that and probably bring it this side and tip it up that way. And I'll put a little airline under it and I'll just have some air bubbles slowly rising up over the eggs, which will keep them oxygenated and stop anything fungusy or anything like that. It'll keep that oxygen, that, that um, what's the word for it now? I'm getting old. Just that surface, that agitation around the eggs, just to keep them moving, just mimicking what the parents are doing, mouthing the eggs and just thinning them, making sure there's no debris settling on them to make them go bad. But it's only going to be a couple of days and then hopefully they're going to be out. So I'll get back to you when we're close and let's hope we can see them hatching, which would be awesome. Right guys, it's day two and already you can see the eggs have taken on a darker appearance males looking after them really well as males do and clownfish look after their babies like I said earlier in the video completely useless when they're hatched mind you have gotta get them out before they hatch or they will eat them but they look after them religiously and you can see those little eggs changing colour male wafting them around with his fins making sure no fungus or anything female having a little clean as well making sure everything's nice and spick and span looking after our little babies and I'll get back to you guys when it's a little bit closer to hatching time and um, with a bit of luck we'll hatch them we'll catch them on the hatch right guys we're two days away from hatching not long now you can see the eggs now are even darker and I'm not sure there but you can see them they're all like hanging in their own little individual little rucksacks in their little egg cases all ready to come out. Mum and Dad are getting a little bit jumpy now because it's getting close to hatching. So, join me for part two when these guys are going to be out. Then I'll teach you all about rotifers and bringing up the babies. If you're new to the channel, hit the old subscribe button and that notification bell for up and coming videos. And you won't miss any that way. And as always, you're all stars. Take care. Love you loads. And I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar